So thanks everybody for attending. Uh, take it away, Jasmine. Thank you, thank you. Let me just sit on my screen so y'all can see my little presentation that I worked very hard on. All right, is that good? Can everyone see what I'm sharing? Okay. Oops. Do you see my little task bar at the bottom? No? Okay, perfect. Okay. Well, wait, I'm sorry. This one froze. Okay, so hello everyone. Thank you for joining me and taking the time today to prioritize your well being. During the presentation, we'll be exploring the transformative effects of self care and how you can make changes in your life starting today. There's going to be a Google document to follow along with today's presentation. It's going to be dropped in the chat. So I would love for you guys to make a copy of that yourself so you can follow along with the activities. And it's going to highlight the key takeaways for today so you can create a copy and follow along. And if it helps, if you have like a little notepad nearby, you have some post-it notes that you want to just like jot down some notes while I'm presenting, feel free to. So with that being said, let's begin unlocking the power of self-care. So on the screen is the QR code link to the worksheet that will follow the presentation. I believe it's been dropped in the chat. Please, please, please make sure to make a copy of it so the information that I'm seeing is relevant to the, our conversation. So you do a chance to scan and open that up, make your copy. All right, I wanna say you guys are ready, so I'm just gonna move on to the next slide. So before I start off, who am I? So I would like to introduce myself, so hello. My name is Jasmine Langomas. I'm a 19-year-old sophomore at King University pursuing a major in business management with a minor in communications. My current aspiration is to work in the music industry and manage artists. I like to stay involved on campus. During my past two semesters, I was a member of A clubs, such as the American Sign Language Club, the Theater Club, the Music Club, and more. This academic year, I'll be a resident assistant for freshmen and the new student government sophomore class treasurer. And beyond academics, I help lead and plan youth programming at the New Jersey Department of Health and advocate for system impacted girls in the New Jersey and New Jersey as a board member for the New Jersey Justice Collaboratives for Girls. And finally, in my free time, I like to bring on my creative side and crochet little plushies and gifts for myself and my friends. And as a well-rounded individual, I have a lot on my plate. And sometimes a lot of these things are happening all at once. So I always, always, always make sure to allocate time for myself and prioritize myself. And today, I'm also going to teach you how you can implement self-care in your life. So if you like me and like having a list of everything that we're going to do, I have the objectives listed out for today. So following this presentation, you will be able to understand what self-care is and its importance, identify different types of self-care, learn to create your own self-care plan, and recognize possible self-care barriers and helpful resources. So I wanna start off by saying, in a world that often demands so much from us in regard to school, work, and home, it's easy to forget the importance of caring for ourselves. But self-care is not a luxury. It's fundamental to our well-being. So looking at that worksheet, there's that first question in self-care for me section, where it says, so in your own words, what is self-care? So I want you to take this time right now just to write like a brief definition of what self-care is to you. You can erase the lines, um, put the underlying feature, just write like in between the lines, whatever is easier for you. So it could be examples of self-care or what self-care actually is. You can write it down. You can pause if you need. So while you write your definition, I'll talk about mine. I can think of self-care as being intentional and taking care of yourself in any form. And kind of looking at our slide, the book definition is self-care is the conscious practice of taking care of one's well-being through activities, behaviors, and habits. And you can see that self-care can be broken down into four main categories, physical, mental, emotional, and social. I'll explain some more specific examples later, but to name a few, yoga is a type of physical self-care and having a heartfelt conversation about emotions with a loved one is a type of social self-care. So depending on the person you ask, you will get different answers. And maybe your definition that you wrote down is slightly similar or different to what I just explained, but there is no right or wrong answer with self-care, as long as you're prioritizing yourself and leaving time for you. 
So when you practice self-care regularly, there are benefits you will see, such as stress reduction, when you give yourself time to decompress your emotions and responsibility, better sleep, when you engage in relaxing self-care activities before bed or throughout the day, boosted self-esteem, because through self-care, you learn to love and accept yourself for who you are and who you were meant to be. Improve productivity because you're taking breaks and engaging in self-care activities that can recenter your focus and priorities. And finally, better relationships because you take the time to process your emotions rather than radiating negative energy with the person or people you're with. I know there's been plenty of times or maybe I had a bad conversation or argument with someone else and I kind of brought that negative energy to another space. So really taking that time for self-care and recentering your thoughts can really help in your everyday life. And even with beneficial, and even with self-care proving to be beneficial as it is, there will always be maybe that one voice or person saying that, oh, self-care is selfish. It requires too much time. It's a sign of weakness. It's not for me. It's not for me. But the most important thing to remember is you are the only person living in your thoughts for the entirety of your life. So take what you need for yourself and always put that first. That being said, self-care is all about you. One quote from Ellen Tia that I want to highlight is that not all self-care activities are for everybody, but there are self-care activities for everyone. Self-care is about nourishing and attending and addressing to one's needs and maintaining a healthy balance in life. Looking back at the activity we did of defining self-care in our own words, you get to define how self-care will look like for you in your everyday life. To give an example, I have a friend who loves to wake up at 5 a.m. every day and go for a run, no matter if they're on vacation or at home or somewhere where it might prove to be maybe an inconvenience at times, because they said it really allows them to get their adrenaline and energy flowing in the morning. Looking at myself, I struggle to wake up early as it is, so maybe that wouldn't be the best for me. But I respect my friend for always making time for themselves, and that's really all self-care is. Self-care doesn't have to be this complex topic or subject. Yes, there are so many different types and sectors of people's self-care, but I think of it as a tree. Self-care is a tree where every individual has their own branch that can branch into infinitely many other branches, with little leaves or little nooks and crannies. And on that tree, you have your own branch too, where you can find and grow ways to take care of yourself. And ideas continuously flow through that tree, through the branches, through the leaves, through the trunk, through the roots. And you can take inspiration from other people's versions of self-care and really create and curate your own. It all comes down to what you choose to do and focus on. So looking back at that worksheet, our next question is thinking about your branch. What are some things you do already that could count as self-care? And feel free to take this time to write them down right now on that worksheet. Again, thinking about our different categories of self-care, it could be something physical, mental, emotional, or social. It could be maybe like, for an example, um, listening to music could be good. Physical, going to the gym, if you do that. Meditating could be an example as well. Yeah, any of those. So as you're writing your ideas of self-care, I'll give an example of mine so we can kind of compare and contrast, see what similarities we have and maybe some differences. So I wanna preface this by saying it's important to keep in mind that I am a college student and have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to my schedule. But as people say, where there's a will, there's a way. Like my friend who runs at 5 a.m., when you find something you love that benefits you, everything else will fall into line. So starting with the picture in the top left, I love fashion. As the brats would say, I have a passion for fashion. So every day I make the conscious choice to spend time finding an outfit that will make me feel and look good. This picture specifically was taken on the first day of spring in my dorm. So I tried my best to match the colors of the weather outside with a little pink sweater, some pink butterfly clips. And honestly, I just felt like that girl walking outside my dorm. And the best feeling is when I receive a compliment for something I put together. It really makes like my passion for fashion worth it, you know? And kind of looking at the picture below that, that's me laying down on a gym bench, getting ready to bench press some weight. Although it's not a lot of weight, it's still weight. So since the beginning of this year, I've been focusing like on my physical health and making the effort to work out three to four times a week. At first, I kind of struggled finding what routines worked for me and overcoming that awkwardness that comes with the gym. You know, I started off only doing like the treadmill because I didn't really know how to work the machines. Like, yes, there's little QR codes you could scan for like a to-do guide on the machine, but sometimes it's like a bit much. 
But with the help of my friends, I have become comfortable weightlifting and I'm seeing improvements in my everyday life. Working out not only boosts my physique, but also my mood. I've also recently started going to the gym with my friends and kind of helping them start their journey. And, you know, it's really nice to have someone where you can, like, uplift one another together. And then finally, the last two projects, the one with me with the green bag and the Spider-Man, are the crochet projects that I finished this year. So during my winter break, in college, you kind of get, like, three weeks to yourself, like, between January and December. I was a little bored, so I wanted to start something, but something that would be had be meaningful and something that I could utilize later down the line. So I began to crochet to pass the time, and soon I became addicted. Every time I go to Walmart, the craft store, the thrift store even, I always look in the yarn section and see what I can get. So this green heart bag was my first major project, and it brought me so much happiness that after 20 hours of work, yes, 20 hours, I made a usable item. And as for the Spider-Man plushie, I spent like eight hours making it and I had to make like the individual like arms, legs, the head, the face. And it, it was a lengthy process. But after seeing my friend's reaction when I gave it to them, it made all the long hours of hard work worth it. So these are some examples of my self-care. I kind of broke it down to show you how it impacts my daily life and gives me a reason to keep doing what I'm doing. Now I want you guys to look at the examples that you wrote down and ask these questions. What are specific moments where I have done this activity? For example, when I crochet, it's either between like classes or maybe like in the morning when I wake up to get my like blood flowing and like get my brain juices going. How does it affect my mood? When I go to the gym, it makes me very happy. You know, after I feel like a lot of adrenaline pumping, the dopamine's flowing through my veins, my neurons. <laughs> and what are the benefits of this activity to my self-care? What does crocheting do for me? What does making an outfit every day do for me? Kind of thinking of it like that. And on the right, that's kind of like where you would, you would put yourself there. So while you do this, I want you to keep in mind ones that you would like to continue doing. So there's a step on your worksheet just to highlight or underline those self-care activities that you would love to continue doing because we'll be utilizing that later for an activity. So take the time, you know, control you, highlight whatever you want to underline, highlight, and keep those in mind. All right. So now let's look at our self care practices and place them into their corresponding categories. So on your worksheet, once you've underlined and highlighted your self care activities, you're going to be marking a P for physical, M for mental, E for emotional, or S for social, and next down to the practices you wrote down. But if you're not sure what the definitions are, I'll explain them as we go right now. So for physical self-care, that refers to the in intentional actions and practices individuals engage in to promote and maintain their physical and well-being, such as overall health, vitality, and physical appearance. Some examples are having a balanced and nutritious diet, regularly exercising, and taking nature walks. As for mental self-care, that involves practicing habits that promote and support your mental well-being, such as psychological health, cognitive function, and emotional resilience. Some examples include playing a game, reading a book, and creating a to-do list. Looking at emotional self-care, that involves tending to your emotional well-being, such as nurturing your feelings and managing your emotional responses in a healthy and constructive manner. This includes mindfulness meditation, positive affirmations, and journaling. And finally, social self-care refers to the practices you engage in to foster healthy, meaningful, and supportive relationships. It involves nurturing connections with others and creating a social environment that contributes positively to your overall well-being. Some examples of this include setting boundaries, relying on others, and hanging with friends. And there is another type of self-care that I did not mention on this slide, which is spiritual self-care, which is cultivating a deeper understanding of one's values and beliefs. I didn't include it on this slide because people practice spirituality a little differently, so it varies, so I didn't want to give any biased examples. So again, looking at your worksheet, make sure to mark a P for social, a for physical, M for mental, E for emotional, and S for social. Next under the practices you wrote. So we've covered what self-care strategies we already partake in. So let's see how we can use them in situations of stress. So in our everyday lives, there can be actions, tasks, people, and more that can trigger anxiety or cause stress. These stressors and triggers can significantly impact our physical, mental, and emotional well-being. If we leave these stressors alone, they may lead to more issues later down the line. Hence, it is important to help recognize these moments in our life and target them accordingly. 
That being said, if you scroll down to the next section of your worksheet, there's a four-step process you can follow. The first step is recalling situations that cause stress and anxiety. So I want you to pick one situation where you may have felt a little stress or it triggered something that had negative emotions tied to it. I'll give you an example. Maybe when you get assigned a lot of homework assignments, your stress gets triggered and you start to feel too overwhelmed to even start the assignments. So take this time to write down a quick one or two sentences about a situation that causes stress and anxiety. So once you do that, I want you to think about your coping mechaniz mechanisms and emotions. In regards to that situation that you are writing down, already wrote down, how do you react in these situations? Going back to the overload of assignments example, do you ignore the situation completely? Or do you partake in other activities to get it off your mind? Maybe when you get assigned a lot of homework, you start to play video games to take your mind off all the assignments that are, mount that are piling up. Also make sure to note any emotions you may feel like panic, stress, anxiety, sadness, or anger. To really center in on that. And now looking at the next step, look at the self-care strategies you wrote in the previous section and maybe think about others you haven't written. Find out what type of self-care activities may calm you down. This includes the physical, mental, emotional, and social self-care, like regularly exercising, journaling, and more. So if you have any, if you have any in that list, that could possibly help you in this specific situation that you're writing down, put them next to it so you can kind of like keep that in mind and correlate with, correlate it with one another. If you like copy and paste it, rewrite it, whatever is easier for you. And then finally, the last step is to put these all together. Looking at the situation that causes stress and how you normally react, think about how you can tie in self-care and change how you would react in these situations. And I feel like it's really important for you to hold on to what you wrote and instill it in your life. Because yes, you will do it right now, but it's not all about doing it right now. It's about doing it in those situations where you're actually experiencing those stress and negative emotions. And this process can be done for other different situations as well. So feel free to, you know, repeat the same four-step process for any situation in your life that may trigger, um, tr um, trigger some stress or negative emotions. And really by identifying and addressing these situations, we can take proactive steps to protect our health and maintain a sense of balance. So again, please be patient with yourself as you navigate these feelings and always know that it's okay to ask for help if you need it. Maybe thinking about these situations overall have are a lot. So don't worry about if you can't do it alone. Always have someone you can rely on. So I hope you guys have finished that section and want to move on to the next slide. So we've talked about current self-care activities and self-care when it comes to stressful situations. So now it's time to discuss practical self-care tips that can be easily integrated into your daily routine. You can call this me time to allocate space in your schedule to spend time on you. So here's some simple self-care strategies you can implement during your me time. So you have morning stretches, mindful breathing, healthy breakfast, hydration, enjoying nature, reading a book, affirming yourself, like going in the mirror and saying, I'm worthy, I'm capable of love. And uh, the LNT, I, I believe it's, I'm capable of, uh, Rachel, can you help me with this one? <laughs> uh, I am lovable and capable. There you go. Right on the tip of my tongue. I am lovable and capable. Really, we're saying that to yourself every day is a great way to affirm yourself declaring a space, listening to music, and talking with friends. And if you'd like, please, please, please take a screenshot of the screen or maybe take a picture with your phone so you can have these practical tips on hand whenever you want to practice. And if you're like, hmm, I'm not exactly sure what to do, always have this to reference for yourself. And remember, self-care doesn't have to be time-consuming or complicated. It's all about finding those small moments throughout the day to prioritize your well-being and recharge. Really integrate these practical self-care tips into your daily routine and tailor them to suit your preferences and your needs. Even simple acts of self-care can have a significant positive impact on your overall well-being. And a quote I like is like the small, 
the small differences have like the largest impact. So, you know, really, if all it really takes is to say a couple words to yourself in the mirror and it'll change your whole mood for the rest of the day. So now that you've kind of taken a picture and took in this slide, there's one practical exercise to implement into your daily routine and it's called the five sense check-in. It's a self-assessment tool that requires nothing but yourself. This activity encourages you to be in tune with your senses and become more aware of how you are feeling in the moment. It's an effective tool to check in with yourself and identify areas where self-care may be needed. So you have an idea of how, the, how this activity works in your free time, so you can do it. We will go through it together right now. So to begin, I want you to find a comfortable and quiet space where you can be alone and without distractions. Hopefully you're already in one, but feel free to move somewhere else if need be. So once you get into that space, I want you to close your eyes and eliminate any visual distractions that might direct your, fo your focus somewhere else. So once you close your eyes, I want you to focus on your senses. Think about your breathing to begin with. So we're gonna take a few deep breaths to really relax and center ourselves. So you can follow along with me. Breathe in and breathe out. You can breathe out through your nose or your mouth, whatever you prefer. Again, we're going to breathe in and then breathe out. And then one last time, breathe in and breathe out. Now, with your eyes still closed, I want you to now focus on each of your senses. senses and we'll go through this together. So I know I said close your eyes, but for this one, we're going to focus on sight. So I want you to open your eyes and observe your surroundings with any judgment. Notice any colors, shapes objects around you. For example, I have a water bottle in front of me. It's blue and white. It's plastic. There's a table in front of me. Little things like that. Just notice and take in really everything around in your area. Now we're going to go on to our next sense, hearing. Listen carefully to the sounds around you, both near and far. Near would be my voice speaking this five sense check in to you. Maybe any ambiance noise that you're hearing. Maybe like you have siblings in your house or there's some noise pollution outside. Really taking everything around you. Now we're going to focus on our smell. Take a deep breath and notice any scents in your air, in the air, whether pleasant or neutral. So maybe you have a candle, incense, and you just spray like some Febreze. Smell that. If it smells like nothing, that's okay too. Just practicing the motion of breathing in and breathing out is a great way to engage your sense of smell. Next is our taste. You can open your eyes, see if there's anything around you you have nearby to taste, maybe like a little mint, a piece of like fruit candy, gum, whatever up to you. If you don't have anything, that's totally okay. Just think of uh, maybe the meal you had before, like your breakfast or your lunch. Really savor that taste. Think about everything that was on that plate or everything that had flavor. You can close your eyes during this as well. And what you think about that taste, our last one is touch. And I want you to open your eyes for this so you don't knock anything over around you. So with touch, I want you to run your fingers over any surface around you, whether it be textured or smooth, and touch different objects around you and feel how they feel and their temperature. You like play around with it, feel the wires, touch your keyboard. And as you engage your senses, be mindful of any emotions or physical sensations that may arise and take note of how you're feeling. So of those five senses, maybe you felt some type of way about something, maybe you feel more relaxed now, just keeping in mind to that. So now I want us to center back, you know, stretch a little bit, I don't know, crack your back, crack your knuckles. I, I like cracking my knuckles, you know, stretching it out, noodle arms. So after you've completed the five sense check-in, it's really good to take just like a few minutes or maybe a couple seconds to reflect on what you observed and how you feel. Some questions you could ask yourself are, am I feeling relaxed or tense? 
Do I notice any areas of discomfort or tension in my body? I know my neck hurts because I always sit <laughs> just slouched. Uh, are there any specific emotions or thoughts that stand out? Do I feel well nourished and rested? Do I need more rest or nourishment? And based on your observations, consider what self-care actions you can take to address any areas of discomfort or unmet needs. It could be as simple as taking a break, practicing deep breathing, kind of how we did earlier, and scheduling some quiet time for yourself. And again, this is on your worksheet too. So if you want to refer back to this later, it's a little check mark so you can check off every sentence as you go through it. And I really suggest this activity it really helps you focus and be in the moment. So now that we did that practical self-care activity, it's time to create our self-care plan. We will go over the steps, then run through a few examples, and then you will have a chance to make your own. So when it comes to creating a self-care plan, there's three important steps. The first is reflecting on your needs, which we just did through the five sentence check. You could also do this just by thinking about past situations, kind of how we did for that, and define stresses and triggers, thinking about past situations that might have brought negative emotions, and seeing where you may need help in different aspects of your life. The next step is listing self-care activities, which is one of the first activities we did on the worksheet of what are some self-care practices you already partake in. So in addition to the ones you already listed, maybe think about new ones, maybe from that slide that we had or the practical self-care tips that you might want to implement in your daily life that you enjoy doing. And then think about maybe a select day in which you would like to practice these specific activities. An example of this could be when someone self-care is walking their dog. And on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, they make a priority to walk their dog every day at 6 a.m. That could be a, an example of self -care. And the last step is to tie everything together and to set clear goals in order to commit to regular self-care practices. So determine what you want to achieve and be flexible. Do remember that, you know, you may say that you're going to walk your dog Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but all of a sudden it's like downpouring Monday. You have a lot of work on Wednesday and Friday, you just don't get around to it. That's okay. That's okay if you don't follow your self-care plan to a T. It's there to guide you and there, there to be an outline. If you can't go on Monday, try to think of a positive solution. Maybe I can go to the next day. Maybe I can go later in the day and go like that. And really with your self-care plan, it's personal and should be tailored to your unique needs and circumstances. The goal to prioritize your well-being and make self-care a consistent and essential part of your life. Over time, your self-care plan will evolve and grow, providing you with a roadmap to a healthier and more balanced life. Remember, it is just the beginning. So now you kind of have an idea of what your self-care plan is. Let's go through some examples and make that plan. So I want you to go to your worksheet and Emily's little character explanation is featured on there. I'll give you a little bit more details about her so you can really make a good curated self-care plan for her. So this is Emily, she's 17. Emily is a thoughtful and empathetic young woman. She has a strong sense of responsibility and often puts others' needs before her own, leading to occasional feelings of overwhelmingness and neglecting her own self-care. Emily can be reserved around new people, but she values close friendships and is a loyal friend. Emily loves writing and journaling as a way to express her thoughts and emotions. She's also passionate about nature and finds peace in spending time outdoors, going for walks or hiking. The challenges Emily faces are being hard on herself, setting high expectations and feeling disappointment if she doesn't meet them. She struggles with managing stress and often finds it difficult to say no to requests from others leading to overcommitment and exhaustion. Social situations can be draining for her, causing feelings of anxiety or insecurity. In terms of her self-care goals, she wants to focus on nurturing her emotional well-being, setting boundaries and promoting self-compassion. With that being said, try to think of what Emily's self-care plan should look like. Take this time to answer the question on your worksheet. And again, just some things about Emily. She values close relationships and is a loyal friend. She loves writing and journaling as a way to express her thoughts and emotions. She's passionate about nature and finds peace in spending time outdoors. With that in mind and everything I just said, think about what Emma should include in her self-care plan. And there's no right or wrong answer. So as I do that, I'll say some examples that I put for Emily that that would work for her. So the first one would be identifying her limits and practicing saying no. 
working with for Emily, I feel like it's really important for her to set her boundaries and identify when it's time to say no. Because sometimes it can be really easy to overcommit and say yes to a lot of things. And when it all comes down to the deadlines, like five things do the same day and they're all going to take five hours, it becomes a lot. So for Emily, I feel like it'd be good for her to practice saying no. And in terms of another self-care, she can take regular nature walks to find peace and really tune into nature, really going outside and getting in her five cents check-in. She could do that, smelling in all like the leaves, taking in the breeze, feeling all like the, the rocks or maybe the trees and really being tuned. Then her uh, last one I put is she can find a balance between her social life and alone time. As Emily said in her challenges, she puts her others before herself all the time. So really taking a step back and realizing when it's like she's spending time with her friends, but also spending time with herself. And these are just a few practices Emily can incorporate in her life to prioritize herself. And I'm sure whatever you put down is great. So now we did Emily, let's move on to our next character, our next person, which is Deshaun. And Deshaun is also on your worksheet. So I'll say a little brief description about Deshaun. So they're 15 years old and a bright and ambitious student. Deshaun is intelligent and often excels in academics and extracurricular activities. Despite their achievements, Deshaun tends to be self-critical and perfectionistic fearing that they'll disappoint others if they show any signs of vulnerability. When faced with challenges, Deshaun often withdraws emotionally, making it difficult for others to understand what they're going through. They have a passion for playing the guitar and find comfort in music. In terms of the challenges Deshaun faces, they're struggling with acknowledging their mental health since they tend to bottle up their emotions and avoid seeking help. help. This leads to increased stress and anxiety impacting their overall well-being and performance in various areas of their life. Deshaun finds it challenging to open up to others about their feelings, making it difficult to build meaningful support networks. Their self-care goals are to focus on recognizing their mental health and finding healthy outlets for their emotions. So similar about the process we just did for Emily, what should Deshaun's self-care plan look like? I remember whenever you're writing this down, Deshaun does go by they, them pronouns, so just write that down. I remember he likes, I mean, sorry, they like to play the guitar and find comfort in music. They tend to be critical and perfectionistic, have anxiety opening up to others. So kind of what I put down, I put down that Deshaun likes, um, Deshaun should begin journaling to express their emotions, you know, just writing down their feelings and maybe possibly explore any underlying issues that they might have not covered. Another thing Deshaun could do is use a guitar to give voice to their feelings. Usually when artists go down with their guitar and start writing, they create masterpieces. So, you know, maybe becoming a musician is something for Deshaun's future that they can look into. And finally, confiding in a loved one about their struggles. It's really important that Deshaun finds a trusted family member, friend, or counselor they can confide in. So they don't feel alone with their struggles and can recognize together that it's okay to experience a range of emotions. And that acknowledging them is a sign of strength and not a sign of weakness. So um, I hope whatever you wrote down is great. So now we're gonna go into making your plan. So on the worksheet below Deshaun, you'll see a little character with the categories, age, personality, challenges, and goals. So let's take back to the three steps of making a self-care plan, reflecting on your needs, creating a list of self-care activities and setting clear goals. On your worksheet, you should be able to see a similar layout. So I want you to mention your age, your personality, how would you would describe yourself, maybe some challenges you're currently facing in social, in social situations, when you're spending time alone with yourself, with responsibilities you may have, and some goals that you wish to achieve in regards to self-care. And feel free to list any self-care activities below you would like to continue to practice. So we can take that time right now to fill that out and I will go ahead. I'm glad you're feeling refreshed, Courtney. Yes, Rachel. Emily definitely needs to work on those boundary setting. Connect with others in a music group. Ooh, I like that. Maybe seeing like what music activities are available like in their school and going off of that. 
So as you fill this out, you can write like something brief. Then not to be too long. Again, you can always revisit this as well in your own time. Your personality, some things that you like to do, maybe your, your hobbies, because I can also jog some ideas of possible self-care activities that you can partake in, challenges going back to maybe that whole process of identifying triggers and stressors. And realistic. A good thing when setting goals is having a smart outlook. It's an acronym. I recommend you guys switch it up. Okay. So I'm going to move on to the next slide. So I'll be mindful of you guys' time. But yeah, feel free to continue working that out while I keep presenting. So you've created a rough draft of your self care plan. Woo! Congratulations on taking that first step. I know you must be eager to start your self-care plan, but I just want to let you know that there's probably going to be some boundaries to your self-care that you will have to overcome. So let's just go over a few and some affirmative actions you can take in response to them. So if you find yourself having time constraints implementing your self-care in your schedule, start with small increments and gradually increase as you see benefits. This will come in handy when your self-care plan is ready. If you feel guilty for taking care of yourself, remember that self-care is necessary and improves your well-being. Caring for yourself really enables you to better care for others and fulfill your responsibilities effectively. Going back to the example about the branch and taking care of yourself, you are living with yourself for the rest of your life. So making sure that you're taking care of yourself and always putting yourself first. If there are any external pressures and expectations from work, family, or social that you are making, that are making you neglect your needs, set those boundaries and communicate those needs to others. You must be the advocate for your well-being and put it on your priority list. Because again, no one has access to thoughts the way you do. And if you're experiencing high levels of stress or kind of feeling overwhelmed, similar to the activity I mentioned about being overwhelmed with a lot of assignments and just being overwhelmed with using self-care in general, self-care is a tool to help you cope. It's not supposed to be something that stresses you out. It's something simple, easy. It doesn't have to be complex or complicated. That five cents check-in, I kid you not, it took less than three minutes. If you're in a rush, it could be even shorter than that. But really taking that time though, even if you're gonna have it be short, take that time to really just engage all five of your senses still. And lastly, if you experience fear of judgment and maybe that might be deterring you from engaging in self-care, remind yourself that caring for you is essential. Prioritizing your well-being defines and plays a huge role in how you will be in your life. And again, these are just some of the barriers you might face, or you might not face any barriers at all. And honestly, props to you. But there might be some other barriers that aren't listed here. But I want you to keep in mind, like, really taking everything down, process like step by step. Maybe think about really what's stopping you. And then seeing how you can change that. You know, taking that negative outlook to a positive outlook. So one point that I want to specifically highlight from the last slide was setting boundaries. And I stress this so much because I'm guilty of not setting boundaries. Setting boundaries is crucial for protecting personal time and energy because it allows you to establish limits on what you are willing to give and receive in various aspects of life. When you set boundaries, you create a healthy balance between your personal needs and the demands of the outside world. As a result, setting boundaries prevents burnout preserves energy, and encourages life balance. And it's easy to say you'll set boundaries, but then you get off the Zoom call and then you forget and you take on too many responsibilities and then all of a sudden it becomes too overwhelming. And it's like, shoot, I should have done it while I still had the chance. And I'm very familiar with this, like I mentioned before, because during my senior year in high school, I was guilty of not setting boundaries. I was very involved in school and out of school. I wake up early to arrive to school on time for my classes from, 9 from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Then following my classes, I go to my after school club, which would start around 2.15 p.m. and then end around 5. And then when drama club season came around, don't even get me started. I got home at like 7, 8 p.m. Then I would go home to be stressed for maybe a couple minutes and then join any online meetings I'd have for maybe like 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. depending on when they were happening. Only then after those meetings would I have time to start all my homework, take care of myself a little bit, you know, maybe like eat something, take a shower, get ready for bed. 
And at the time, I was also filling out college applications. So also add that to the mix of everything. And it's like, you know, filling out your common app, writing down all these essays. It sounds like word gibberish after a minute. And with all this, I would just sleep around maybe 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. and then repeat that cycle. And I can attest that it was vicious and definitely took a toll on me because I would pent up all my emotions of, you know, like um, being tired, maybe anger. And then it would lead to possible breakdowns when it became too much. I remember I was sitting in my car with my friend and I was dropping her off and she said she thought that I was a little weird that day. And she was like, you were okay. And then just led to a whole conversation. And it was really nice to be able to rely on her. So without a doubt, I was definitely experiencing burnout because I could not say or withdraw myself from everything I was doing. But this was really the turning point for me during the middle of my senior year. I was like, I gotta make a change and learn how to say no. So when the next opportunities came up, I would always then reevaluate them and kind of like evaluate what I was doing. Did I have time in my schedule? Was there availability? Maybe like, I don't have this, ma this many homework assignments so I could take that on or, oh, I have to create a project. I have to fill this application. I probably can't do this, so I'm gonna say no. So I was forcing myself to live a negative way and I really took the initiative and put a stop to it. And that's all it takes. To be that person all the time is exhausting. You wake up some days and you're just like, I don't want to do this. And you know what? That's okay. Everyone needs a break every once in a while. Boundaries help protect what we love about ourselves. And without them, it leads to disconnect. So making sure you identify your limits, feel comfortable saying no, and being firm and clear with people is important when setting, when setting boundaries. And you know, change in your life is possible because it really all starts with you. And finally, you don't have to do any of this alone. There are resources accessible to you and support systems that you can create. When thinking about a support system, it is a network of people who can provide practical or emotional support to you. This includes a close-knit friend group, strong relationships with family members, and any trusted individual you can rely on. This helps when you need someone to just listen to you without judgment and provide constructive feedback. I have some hometown friends, like I was mentioning, that helped me during so many times in my life, especially when I was feeling overwhelmed, and I'm eternally grateful for them. And if you don't have a support system, that's okay. You can take this time during the school year, maybe reaching out to people that you might be acquaintance to, and we want to deeper that friendship with them, or reaching out to family members that you want to get closer to. And don't be afraid to seek professional help. People say get therapy all the time, but again, therapy brings a lot of financial burdens that maybe people don't have the funds to, you know, pay for. But of course, depending on your insurance and your economic status, it may be an option for you. I know online you might be able to search up like therapy scholarships, or maybe there's therapy through different resources that you might have access to. So in addition to seeking support systems and professionals, there are also free online resources available. So on that worksheet, the last page, there's a list of resources that you have access to 24 seven all the time. Not all of them, but like the, I meant like the links. The links are always gonna be there. The links are never leaving your page. So you can always have access to that. One of my personal favorites is Salsi. I was actually a youth friend ambassador for them and I loved their resources. It's a web app that has physical and mental health resources and stories from youth for you. You can find information on all kinds of topics such as LGBTQ+, friendships, mental health, and stress. And again, it's literally 100% free and there to help you. There's also a hotline and helpline available. In the state of New Jersey, there's the second floor youth helpline, which is a number you can text or call whenever you need. On your worksheet, these resources again are listed at the bottom for you to use. Also, making sure that you look at wellness, local wellness programs and resources available to you. Usually in schools, such as high schools, and I know definitely colleges, offer free mental health resources to students. I know at my university, you can definitely sign up for counseling sessions in the Wellness Center through their website. And you might be allotted maybe like one to three free sessions. And after that, you might have to fill them your insurance and then pay for it accordingly. But again, those first sessions are still free. And that was going to be the only sessions that you need. And these communities and your university, they care for you. They have these resources out for you. It's not for them. It's for the students. Because without you, there, would no be, there wouldn't be a need for schools. There wouldn't be a need for communities. It's us as individuals that make up together these spaces. So really prioritizing ourselves and making sure that we're the best versions of ourselves in these spaces, it should be our top priority. 
And one more resource I would love to highlight is the LMTI webpage that is dedicated to showing what resources are available to you, such as hotlines you can call and text to address any of your needs at the moment. And the link is on the screen, and it's also featured on the worksheet as well. And again, it's just njlmti.org slash resources. And before you leave, I want to give you one more piece of advice. During this process of implementing self-care in your everyday life, celebrate your successes. This is only possible because of you. Being here today, listening to this presentation, and filling out the worksheet is you taking the initiative to better help you. Small achievements in your self-care journey are still achievements. So be proud of yourself, whether it be utilizing the resources around you that we just mentioned, setting boundaries, or utilizing those practical self-care tips or that self-care plan you just wrote. You are worthy and amazing for doing it. Also, find a way to track your progress. This could be maybe through journaling. I have a diary and I'm not, I'm not embarrassed. You know, sometimes I'm like writing my emotions. I'm like, hey, journal, how are you? And you know, it's just a great way to just like track my progress. Like I did this today and you can like see how your self-care is coming along and like read back past entries and be like, hmm, how have I changed from then? Also having a planner could be helpful. I'm a physical planner, love me some Amazon. They're so cute. You know, you just write down everything you need to do in the day. Some have like priority lists. You can like prioritize things you need to complete in the week, which I really like. And also calendars. There's online calendars, but my favorite is Google Calendar because you, can, you can send invites to people, write down your class schedules, any meetings you have. And it's really nice to like itemize everything and have everything visible to you. Because sometimes, you know, you might be guilty of forgetting your me time. So definitely when you have a Google Calendar, you put that me time in there and you don't forget it because it sends you reminders and notifications on your phone. And having that really help you stay accountable with your self-care plan and your self-care goals. Really, one thing I want to say is don't procrastinate prioritizing yourself. And with that said, thank you guys for your time today. I hope you feel more equipped when it comes to self-care. Make sure to implement your self-care plan as soon as you can. You know, applaud yourself as you go. Don't forget about setting boundaries, and I hope you overcome any barriers you may face. And I want to leave you with one quote. Investing in your self-care is a necessity for a healthy and happier you. Self-care is all about you. Think about your tree branch and grow and blossom into the best version of you. Thank you. I'm stop sharing my screen so I can see your beautiful faces. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jasmine. That was so, so phenomenal. I feel uh, super ready to go and uh, take on my self-care. Um, we are so happy you were able to come share this with us. Uh, this webinar was funded by SAMHSA for a mental health awareness training grant. And we have a lot more coming throughout the summer. We're, e we're going to be hosting some live sessions as well as posting some on our YouTube. So uh, please keep your eyes out for those. And thank you all so much for joining us.